percent. What this means is that if you test 100 Kenyans for COVID, 20 will be positive. This compared to January this year, when only two would have been positive. And this tells us that our rate of infection has gone up 10 times between January and March of 2021. Indeed, it is clear, and we have a clear indication of a new trend, that now Kenya is squarely in the grip of a third wave of this pandemic. In terms of geographical impact, Nairobi County accounts for close to 60% of the recorded cases. What this means is out of every 10 positive cases countrywide, six are from Nairobi. In other words, if we took a random sample of five people in Nairobi and tested them for COVID, three are likely to be positive. This unfortunate turn of events calls for urgent and indeed drastic measures. Fellow Kenyans, what is even more worrying is the rising death rate from COVID. Between January and February of this year, three people were dying every day from COVID. In March, this number has gone up to seven people dying every day, the highest since the pandemic hit us. Equally worrisome is how this COVID crisis has tested our health system. Over the last one month, we have experienced a steep and sustained rise in the number of admissions for COVID-19 across the country. Since my last address on the 12th of March, 7,630 Kenyans had been admitted to our hospitals for COVID-19. Yet before my address to the nation on, 9th, on March 12th, there was only 4,990 Kenyans that had been admitted. So in less than 13 days, our admission rate in our hospitals has increased by 52%. In the month of January 2021, an average of 20 Kenyans were in intensive care units needing oxygen. This number went up to just under 30 persons in the month of February. Since my address on the 12th of March, over 950 Kenyans are in ICU wards for COVID-related complications. This confirms the fact the third wave of COVID-19 is at hand in Kenya. The positivity rate is the highest since the pandemic hit us last year. The death rate is devastating by all measures. And the stress that the pandemic is placing on our health system is unparalleled. Indeed, according to our health experts, our third wave began to gain momentum at the beginning of March 2021. This wave is expected to peak in the next 30 days with more than 2,500 to 3,000 cases being reported daily. Based on our previous experience, this peak will flatten only by mid-May 2021, which is about 60 days from now. So fellow Kenyans, to avert a national health crisis, and upon the advice of the National Security Council and the Council of Governors, and also in keeping with the recommendations of the National Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19, I today hereby issue the Public Order Number 2 of 2021 on the coronavirus pandemic as follows. 
Number one, that fully conscious that 70% of Kenya's reported cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in the counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru. These counties are individually and collectively declared a disease-infected area. That there shall be a cessation of all movement by road, rail, or air into and out of the disease-infected area as one zoned area comprising of the counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru, effective midnight tonight, therefore meaning effective Saturday, the 27th of March, 2021, until otherwise notified. That all gatherings and in-person meetings of whatever nature are suspended within the counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru until further notice. That all, all in-person meetings of the Cabinet and its committees, with the exception of the meetings of the National Security Council, are suspended until further notice. That in concurrence, that with the concurrence of the parliamentary leadership of both Houses of Parliament, and with the concurrence of the county leadership, the ordinary sessions of the August House, including those of their committees, and the ordinary sessions of the county assemblies of Nairobi, Machakos, Kajiado, Kiambu, and Nakuru, are hereby suspended until further notice. In accordance with the standing orders of the National Assembly and the Senate, the two, the two speakers of Parliament will move to effect this decision, as will the speakers of the respective county assemblies. The international travel into and out of the territory of the Republic of Kenya shall continue in accordance with the existing guidelines on foreign and international travel. That all persons coming into the country must be in possession of a negative COVID-19 PCR certificate acquired no more than 96 hours prior to arrival into the country. With a PCR certificate also having been validated under the trusted travel platform for those traveling by air. That the hours of the ongoing nationwide curfew are revised to commence at 8 p.m. and end at 4 a.m. in the zoned area that I have just mentioned of Nairobi, Kiambu, Kajiado, Machakos, and Nakuru. And in the rest of the country, it shall remain at 10, from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., as is currently the case. This, again, shall be effective as of midnight tonight, and that is Saturday, the 27th day, of March 2021. That in light of the abuse of curfew passes and exemptions and its role in the steep increase in, in infections, the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, jointly with the Ministry of Health, is directed to immediately review the protocols for reissuance of curfew passes and exemptions and in that regard in the intervening period all issued passes 
are hereby vacated. That all physical and in-person, as well as congregational worship, in all places of worship in the counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru, stands suspended until otherwise notified. That in regard to the other 42 counties, in-person worship and congregational worship shall continue to be conducted in keeping with the one-third rule and in accordance with the guidelines of the Interfaith Council. With respect to education in Kenya, there shall be an immediate suspension of all ongoing physical learning in all our education institutions, including universities and tertiary and vocational colleges, other than for candidates sitting for their examinations and those in medical training institutions until otherwise notified. That all sporting activities are hereby suspended. Similarly, operations of sporting and recreational facilities, including members clubs, are suspended until it is otherwise directed. That in line with the directive on public gatherings, including social gatherings, the following measures are to come into effect commencing midnight, Friday the 26th of March 2021. That the operations of bars is suspended in the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kajiado, Kiambu, and Nakuru. Similarly, the sale of alcohol in restaurants and eateries in the five counties is prohibited until further notice. That all restaurants and eateries in the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kajiado, Kiambu, and Nakuru shall provide takeaway services only. That the operations of bars and restaurants and eateries in the other 42 counties shall continue as is, but they shall at all times be conducted in strict fidelity to the Ministry of Health guidelines, failure to which appropriate action against management, staff, patrons, and premises shall be taken. Public transport operators are directed to strictly uphold the redesignated 60% carrying capacity, and the county emergency response committees that we formed are directed to enforce implementation of infection pre prevention control measures in markets such as hand washing stations while also ensuring that all sellers and buyers must be fully masked and maintain physical distance. That all employees and enterprises of whatever nature including public bodies, the private sector, government offices, and others are directed to allow their employees to work from home with the exception of employees working in critical or essential services that cannot be delivered remotely until further notice. That the judiciary, law enforcement, remand and correctional facilities, as well as the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, and other players and stakeholders in the criminal justice and civil justice system are also to take immediate action to eliminate non-essential physical contact or situations within their areas of mandate that may lead to crowding or propagation of the disease. That all hospitals are directed to limit the number of visitors for hospitalized patients to two visitors per patient. That all physical meetings or events, including social gatherings, 
shall have a cap of no more than 15 persons until further notice. In regard to funerals, cremations, and other interment ceremonies, it is directed that these ceremonies shall be conducted strictly within 72 hours of confirmation of death. That the attendees, officiators, and facilitators of funerals or graveside or cremation ceremonies shall be limited to 50 persons in total. That the attendees, officiators, and facilitators of wedding celebrations, of marriage or traditional union ceremonies, or ceremonies of rites of passage, and all other similar events or ceremonies shall be limited to 30 persons in total. That the prohibition against political gatherings is extended until otherwise directed, and that in view of the high morbidity and mortality rates among those who are above 50 years of age, those above 58 years of age shall be vaccinated as a priority during this first vaccination phase. Fellow Kenyans, whereas the foregoing measures will indeed have some adverse effects on our economy and constrain our usual way of life. The measures are temporary and necessary to contain the spread of the disease and therefore to stop further loss of life. I am personally convinced that the cost of not acting now would be far much greater. In a moment like this, as a caring government, it is our solemn duty and indeed our cardinal responsibility to protect life above all else. One life lost is one too many. Our thoughts and indeed our prayers at this particular moment are with the families of those who have succumbed to this disease. Fellow Kenyans, this is not an enemy that we are called upon to fight with bullets and bombs, but rather one that can be defeated by physical and social distancing, wearing of appropriate face masks, frequent hand washing with soap and running water, and compliance with all other anti-coronavirus guidelines and protocols. I want to emphasize that COVID is an invisible enemy and the war against it is indeed complex. Government alone cannot fight it and win. As government, we have co-created solutions where we act together with citizens, the private sector, faith groups, civil society, and community organizations in order to wage and win this war. On my part, my administration will uphold its duty of care to the people of this republic, and we will go to any length or breadth required to ensure that every single Kenyan is safe. And to you, my fellow citizens, you too have an equally important role to play. The starting point, as we have always said, is for us to agree that government cannot police your morality or impose prudence and love for self and others. Individually, Kenyans must shoulder their role in the fight against COVID-19. Your health and that of your family, that of your friends, that of your neighbors, depends on the decisions that you make and the actions that you take. Government can and will undertake its duty, but ultimately, the success or failure of our nation's efforts boils down to individuals and communal behavior 
by our citizens. Even as we do so, I today urge all law enforcement officers to live true to their oath of office and to discharge their duties without fear or favor if the government upholds its duty of care to the citizens and Kenyans, one and all must respond by exercising their civic duty. Then by the strength of our resolve, our resourcefulness, and our unity as a nation, we can and indeed we shall prevail. I am confident that working together we as a government, upholding our duty of care to you, our citizens, and you as citizens, responding by exercising your civic responsibility, we will defeat this third wave of COVID like we did before, and we will defeat it because we are all doing our part, and we shall be proud to say that every single individual did their part to the best of their ability. Sitaki niongeze zaidi ya hapo. I think statement ni quite clear. Isipokuwa kusema tu wenzangu na hasua vijana wa taifa la Kenya. Huu ugonjwa uko nasi. Huu ugonjwa unaua. Huu ugonjwa narudia tena unaua na najua sana sana kwa vijana wetu ni changamoto kubwa kuona kama umefungiwa na unaambiwa usikaribie marafiki ndugu usitembee usifanye mambo mengine lakini kwenu ombi langu tuvumilie kwa muda huu mfupi huu ugonjwa utupite na kwa kuvumilia kwenu mutasaidia na mutaokoa wazazi marafiki ndugu na dada zenu mutaokoa maisha yao wenzetu sasa wakati tunaongea hakuna mtu ambaye hajui moja ama mwingine ambaye amechukuliwa na huu ugonjwa kwa hivyo vile nimesema ni ya kwamba kama serikali sisi tutafanya lolote tuwezavyo kuhakikisha kwamba tumelinda maisha ya wakenya lakini jukumu ile kubwa zaidi itakuwa yenu wananchi watukufu wa jamhuri hii yetu ya Kenya tushirikiane tukubali kuchanjwa tusipotoshwe na uongo mwingi ndio tujiokoe na tuokoe taifa letu la Kenya. Kwa hayo machache na mengi nasema Mungu awabariki. Mungu aibariki taifa letu la Kenya na tuendelee kushikana pamoja mpaka tupate ushindi na hii ugonjwa ambaye imetukumba. Asanteni sana.